Hello, my name is Ariana, and I have with me Josh, Sam, Brooklyn, Tanya, Andrea, Okala, Nicole, and she. We are here to share our project on managing chronic illnesses, specifically diabetes, within the unhoused population at South Hayward Parish. South Hayward Parish is not just a shelter, but a vital support system for many individuals in the Hayward and Castro Valley communities who face immense challenges in accessing basic health care. Our project aims to bridge this gap by providing essential health services, education, and support to those who are often overlooked by the traditional health care system. Over the past few months, we have been working closely with the guests and staff at South Hayward Parish to understand the unique health needs of this vulnerable population. Through our combined efforts, we hope to make a meaningful impact on their health outcomes and quality of life. Today, we'll walk you through the steps we've taken, the challenges we face, and the lessons we've learned along the way. Target population. The community we serve at South Hayward Parish includes individuals 18 and older who are experiencing homelessness within the Hayward and Castro Valley areas. This population faces challenges that extend beyond the immediate lack of housing. Many are struggling with chronic medical conditions such as diabetes and hypertension, compounded by barriers to, consist health, to consistent healthcare access, medication management, and even basic necessities like food and hygiene. Living without stable shelter significantly increases the complexity of managing these health issues. Without regular place to stay, it becomes nearly impossible for individuals to maintain a healthy diet, store medications properly, or even attend regular medical appointments. These obstacles contribute to worsening of chronic conditions and create a cycle that is difficult to break. At South Hayward Parish, we saw firsthand the resilience of this community, but we also saw the urgent need for comprehensive support. Our goal was to address not only the immediate medical needs, but also to provide the resources and education necessary to empower these individuals to take control of their health in the long term. The issue we are focusing on is the increased risk of uncontrolled diabetes among unhoused individuals at South Hayward Parish. Several contributing factors exacerbate this issue, including limited or inconsistent access to healthcare services, inadequate medication management, a lack of education and awareness about diabetes, and a significant food insecurity that prevents access to healthy, diabetes-friendly meals. These challenges are compounded by the unstable living conditions faced by this population, which make it difficult for individuals to prioritize and manage their health. This growing problem is evidenced not only by the consistently high blood glucose readings recorded, during screenings, but also through feedback provided by guests who have shared their ongoing struggles with managing diabetes and accessing the resources they need for proper care. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Melendez and I'll be going over what we found in the literature and how our interventions connect with the Healthy People 2020 objectives. Our literature review underscores the critical health disparities faced by the unhoused population particularly when it comes to managing chronic conditions like diabetes. Research shows that approximately 16% of homeless individuals in Alameda County are affected by diabetes, which is significantly higher than the general population. Additionally, a 2015 survey conducted in Hayward, California, revealed that 12.7% of respondents reported suffering from diabetes, further highlighting the severity of this issue in our local community. The significance of this problem becomes even more apparent when we consider that nearly 25% of unsheltered individuals report having at least one chronic health condition. Among those with diabetes, poor management is common, leading to complications such as neuropathy, retinopathy, and cardiovascular disease, which are often exacerbated by inadequate access to consistent healthcare and nutritious foods. Comparing our local data with similar communities, we found that 40% of unhoused individuals have a hemoglobin A1C level 16 points higher than the target value. These elevated levels indicate not just poor blood glucose control, but also an increased risk for severe complications, including stroke and kidney failure. The complex nature of managing chronic conditions in this population is compounded by factors such as limited healthcare access, delayed diagnoses, 
lack of follow-up care, and additional risk factors like smoking, mental health disorders, and substance use. These challenges contribute to a cycle of deteriorating health and increased healthcare costs due to frequent emergency department visits and hospitalizations. National health objectives, such as those outlined in Healthy People 2020, emphasize the need for increasing the proportion of individuals with diabetes who receive formal education and have their condition diagnosed. However, the unhoused population for the unhoused population, these goals are challenging to achieve without targeted interventions that address the, the unique barriers they face. This literature review not only informs our intervention approach, but also emphasizes the urgency of addressing diabetes management within this vulnerable group by providing regular health screenings, education, and supporting and navigating the healthcare system, we aim to contribute to close the gap in health disparities and improve outcomes for these individuals. Our interventions align with Healthy People 2020 objectives. These seek to increase the proportion of people with diagnosed diabetes who receive formal diabetes education. Additionally, we are working towards objective D15, which focuses on increasing the number of people with, whose diabetes is diagnosed and managed effectively. These objectives guide our intervention strategies and expected outcomes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Sherman, and today I'll share with you our assessment methods. So to understand the health needs and the challenges of the community, we implemented various assessment methods, including key informant interviews where we spoke with staff and some of the guests to gather insight into the health challenges faced by the unhoused population. We conducted a windshield survey where this involves driving and exploring through the community and observing the environment to identify health resources and living conditions. This is a way to visually assess the community without direct interaction. Physiological measurements we conducted health screenings to measure blood glucose, blood pressures, heart rate, and oxygen saturations. Behavioral observations, where we observed the daily activities and behaviors of the guests to understand lifestyle factors that may impact their health. And last, general assessment surveys. These surveys helped us gather more structured data on the health issues and access to healthcare services among the population. Hi, my name is Samantha and I'll be going over the interventions we've implemented. We conducted weekly health screenings to identify any abnormalities in blood glucose, blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen saturation. This was crucial for establishing a health profile for each guest. Throughout time, the data obtained allowed guests to keep track of the effectiveness of the interventions they chose to incorporate into their daily lives and empowered them to take responsibility for their health. We also organized weekly health education sessions to improve health literacy regarding diabetes. Educational materials included pamphlets and handouts that detailed how diabetes occurs, how it can affect overall health, and multiple lifestyle habits that can help maintain normal blood glucose levels. Discussions with guests took place to clarify any information learned and created a safe space for guests to ask questions. Finally, we help connect guests with healthcare providers for emergency care services, primary care services, and pharmaceutical services, as well as assisted them in applying for health insurance as needed. My name is Okala Mundeke. I'm going to share our outcome and evaluation. Our primary outcome goal is to improve diabetes management as indicated by a reduction in blood glucose level among participants. By week 10, we hope to see these changes. Another critical outcome is enhanced health literacy. We aim for participants to demonstrate a better understanding of diabetes and the importance of medication adherence and lifestyle modification. This will be measured by the ability to articulate the significance of these strategies and apply them in their daily lives whenever it is possible. Hello, my name is Shi. I will be discussing about some of our challenges that we have encountered here at South Haver Parish. During our intervention, 
one significant issue was inconsistent participant attendance, which made it difficult to ensure regular monitoring and education. To mitigate this, human resources were visible at the shelter entrance. I reached out to non-participants about their health concerns and will report as appropriate. Another challenge was the limited resources in time, which restricted the scope of our intervention. Given these constraints, we focused on short-term impactful strategies such as health education on diabetes and immediate health care referrals to address urgent needs. In conclusion, managing chronic illnesses such as diabetes in the unhoused population requires a comprehensive approach that integrates health education, accessible health care services, and consistent monitoring. While our intervention has shown promise, it has also highlighted the ongoing need for more resources and support to sustain these efforts. By sustaining these efforts, we hope to see continued progress in management of chronic diabetes and the unhoused population. Our work at South Hayward Parish is a small but essential step towards addressing these disparities. Thank you for your attention and we welcome any questions or comments.